Welcome to the stream for today. Let me fade out that background music and say hello to you all. Good to see you all saying hi on the stream. I can see you just blow me um, on the streaming thing. So that's good. I still I still hear the music though. Um, hang on. Although I think I closed Spotify. <laughs> I can still hear it. It's kind of a chirpy little like house beat. Uh, I don't really like that song, I gotta say. But it just came up on the free uh, streaming, copyright free streaming channel or whatever. But yeah, now Spotify, I can't even open Spotify in order to close it. Um, I mean, I can mute it so you can't hear it, hopefully. <laughs> I can still hear it. That's, that's a little distracting. I'm going to have to deal with this before I can really get started. But uh, today I do have a number of things I wanted to talk about, so hopefully... You're watching hopefully you can hear me okay um i have changed my setup a little bit you, you might be able to tell i'm not i don't have a clipped on mic uh, i've got it attached to a little stand right in front of me so hopefully it sounds okay it looks like the levels are good it's just like you know i don't know how sensitive it is sensitive it is to my movements because this is a, it's a lavalier mic so it's meant to be like clipped like a foot away from your mouth so i don't know you know if i move too much maybe it sounds bad but if, if you if you have any trouble let me know um i didn't it seemed like the stream I did this morning went fine, so hopefully that's the case. Yeah, and I can't even, hold on, I'm not so from my system monitor and kill the process, I suppose, because I can still hear it. I don't know, maybe, I mean, it's just, it's coming out of my headphones, but it's like quite loud coming out of my headphones. All right, I'm going to kill the process. What, seriously, that didn't work? Hold on. Yes. There we go. <laughs> I had to do like a super kill to kill the process. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Uh, today is a, uh, well, it was rainy, but it's cloudy, and then it's like the sun's coming out. Um, it's a it's a November day, um, unusually warm uh, for November, but definitely a, a fall kind of day. It's going to be much colder tomorrow, I think. I think the storm might be a cold front, although I'm not sure. I'm not a weatherman. Um, but um, I've done a few things to change my setup here that you might be able to tell. I have uh, reinstalled my green screen situation behind me. It's uh, I got a, a fresh set of poster boards for you know $9 total and uh, stapled them to the trim on my walls so that they are not... Like what happened before is they were glued there and then the glue and the tape kind of let go as the humidity and temperature changed in the room. So uh, I stapled it up there so it should be fine. Um, it seems okay so far. I've also got, uh, I, I, I keep getting glare out of this, in this window over here. Not right now, because it's cloudy again, but I was getting really harsh sun glare a minute ago. And so I just, I hung up some towels there. I obviously should just get some, you know, curtain there or shower curtain or something, uh, but not that important right now. And probably won't really be an issue as the sun continues to change its position in the sky and my streaming time of day changes. In fact, there should be just two more streams total or two days worth of streaming total uh, for this semester. So, um, you know, not much longer to deal with, but I, I'm, I'm gonna be teaching in the winter and spring online too. So I figured it was worthwhile to invest in my space a little bit, at least uh, invest some thought in it. Okay, so here's a few things I wanna talk about today. 
and um, I don't have any slides prepared, so I'm just gonna say them, and then um, if I forget something, if you have a question about something, like if you tune in late, uh, just feel free to ask. But um, hello, <laughs> uh, I want to talk a bit about turning in the big project. Uh, I wanna talk about the project gallery. I wanna talk about uh, peer reviewing or sharing your final projects. I think that's it. I think there's, I think, I feel like there's one more thing. Oh, yeah, then the final, well, no, I'll talk about that later. Um, and then, uh, so those are several things that are kind of logistic y. Um, I also wanted to just share, this is sort of related to the class, but it's something that I've been working on for the past week, um, week or two. And so I, I wanted to show you all a creative project that is nearing completion for me. And uh, it's kind of my big project for the semester, I suppose. So I, I wanted to show you that. If I can get it to, complete the thing it's doing right now. It's just, it's taking a really long time to process some images. And I know it would, I knew it would take a while because it's 8,000 images, but it's been like an hour and a half and I feel like it should be done by now. Um, and I didn't write it in such a way that it can tell me how far along it has gone. So I just have to, just have to wait. Um, anyway, let me talk a bit about the uh, logistic -y things first and turning in things make sure you don't have any questions, make sure you're clear on what to do. Uh, first of all, um, turning in the big project, you know, it's an assignment in Canvas. It's, um, you, you know, I, I, your projects have very many different forms, have taken very many different forms. Um, so there's no like standard uh, common way to turn these in. Just go with whatever makes the most sense uh, to you in terms of what you've created. Um, it could be uh, like give me the, the best version of your project basically. So like if you've got a twine game, um, share the published version. Like if you've got it hosted on a subdomain, share a link to that subdomain. So that's this version I see. I'd rather see that than like your current draft, even if your current draft is ahead of the published version, give me the published version. Um, if it's a podcast, give me a, a link to you, like, like maybe your anchor profile or your Spotify page, depending on how you're doing that. Instagram, you know, link to the Instagram profile, website, give me a link to the website. Um, I think in most cases you'll be able to figure this out pretty easily depending on what you're doing. But if you have any questions, let me know. Or just honestly take your best guess. And if I can't find it or if I'm confused, I will I will ask for clarification. Um, this is kind of a formality because I've seen most of your projects already. So uh, it, this is really just for future reference, like a month or two from now when I'm like, what was it? What are they working on? And then I can go back and I can find it pretty easily. So really that's that's the main purpose of this at this point. Um, looks like 24, 24 of you are, 24 of you have already submitted it, so thank you. Uh, I'll take a look at that. Um, if you still need a little bit of time, it's fine. Uh, I am very flexible on due dates and so on. Uh, the only caveat to that being that we're nearing the, very, the end of the semester, so there's not a lot of room to flex left. So uh, you need to be wrapping up soon. Um, that said, the version of your project that exists today may not be the final version, even if you've already turned it in. I hope you will be um, getting some feedback or some comments from people and so you might choose to tweak it a little bit or revise it further um, before you decide that you're totally done with it um, and that's that's fine that's just that, that's the iterative process that's the, the way things uh, digital projects tend to go so um, that's uh, a good thing right uh, so any questions let me know um, but I hope that's pretty clear okay so that's turning in the big project what else was I going to talk about Oh yeah, so let me, let's go into the big project gallery and then that may introduce further questions. Um, let me take a look. I shared a link in um, Canvas earlier, so let me open that up here. Firefox, so I can show you. I do wanna talk about this a little bit just to make sure that you understand what I'm asking you for here. And uh, also I wanna be sure to uh, clarify as I explain it, that you have several choices here that are significant choices. Like this isn't just sort of a, you know, fill in the blanks kind of formality thing. This is something that you should put some thought into um, because it does, it does make a difference. So uh, think, please think about it. Let me, let me talk through it here a little bit. Um, so this is, I've shown you this every now and then. Um, I, you know, I've just not had any time to work on this or, Honestly, I've just had other things that have been a bit more interesting or pressing, so I've been working on them. Um, but I've got a plan to produce a new version of DGST101.net, and it is a work in progress, and it 
is has not made much progress lately, uh, partly because I have not been teaching DGST 101, but um, I do intend this to replace what is currently hosted at DGST 101.net. And um, what you see here, these are students from, I guess, spring 2019 or fall 2018. Or fall 20. I don't remember honestly. It's been a while. But these are these are different people's big projects, just like you're completing a big project right now. And these are I'm inviting you to submit your project to this gallery, so it'll show up the same way that you see these here. Now, there's some cleanup I need to do. Like you'll see in some cases, like you know, sustainable living by Anna Hughes and 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 n slash a. Like obviously, I don't need to have n slash a there. That was just a blank spot in the form. I don't know why that happened, honestly. So it's things like that that I need to clean up, uh, maybe a couple of descriptions. Um, but the point is to share your work in a way that lets other people see it in the future. And I think many of you have benefited from being able to see some of these um, students' projects from past semesters. So I hope that you similarly don't mind sharing your work with future students. Um, I'll be teaching this class again in the spring. Usually I don't. Usually I teach 395 in the spring. I mean, 395 in the fall, 101 in the spring. But because of some shuffling around, I'm going to be doing 395 again um, in January. So that's going to be an immediate audience for your work. And uh, they will, I'm sure, benefit from having lots of great examples like the kind of projects you're completing. Um, especially, I, I was really impressed to see uh, how many of you did podcasts. And from what I've seen so far, did, did really well with podcasting. So I think that would be great inspiration for future students to consider. So. That's the point of this, but like I said, there are several options, and this is an option. This is not required. This is, um, you know, I hope you'll submit your work, but I'm not going to require you to submit your work. Uh, so let's take a look at what this is asking. Um, I think it is pretty self-explanatory for the most part, but please do allow me to explain it anyway. Um, so your first thing here is your preferred name. What do you want to be known as here? And this literally is what will show up here. So, you know, these people, this is what they chose to be known as. So this could be your actual name, it could be a screen name, it could be something, you know, some nickname, whatever, like anything you want here, right? Uh, I Collaborators, I don't think there were any group, group projects at all with this semester, unless I'm forgetting one, but I, I really don't think there were any. So this just leaves this field blank. Graduation year, um, I guess you could say fall 2020 or spring 21, whichever. Um, yeah, I don't know if that needs to be a number or could it, if it could be a semester. Yeah, just go with fall 2020 if you're graduating right now, or spring 21 if you're graduating in the spring, or, or whichever. Go with whichever you, um, whichever makes sense to you, uh, which whatever whichever one you're planning for, I guess. Uh, which class is this? This is obviously DGST 395, so check that box. And what semester is it right now? It's fall 2020, and then that's kind of the, the basics. All right, so what is your project called? So your podcast has a name, your Instagram profile has a name, your game has a name, whatever the thing is, the artifact, the project itself, the thing that someone would perceive as your project, what is it called? Um, keep it succinct if it's something kind of long. You know, you might need to tweak it a bit to make it something that's readable. Think about how it would show up here in this gallery. And you can see some of these are pretty long, right? So creating a book repair digital resource for the University of Mary Washington Simpson Library, pretty long title, excellent project, you know, but that's something where maybe a shorter title would help it be easier to click on. Um, I mean, that said, it really is an excellent project, so you should definitely check on it uh, if you haven't already. Um, but what do you want your project to be known by? Uh, then give me a long description here, and I think actually Kindle is a pretty good one, so let's take a look. Yeah, so the long description, this is going to show up right here, and think of it as kind of like an abstract. Um, you know, a paragraph would be great, uh, explaining what what this is. So if someone's interested in your, your project, they see the thumbnail and the title, they click on it, what are they going to see here that helps them understand your project better? Um, you know, this is something that might, you might want to go back to your proposal and look at your um, your project narrative for that, that might be something you could uh, adapt or you know even copy and paste and then update if needed, if there were any changes to it since what, what, uh, since your uh, since when you produced it. Um, that's it. So yeah, uh, this should be fairly descriptive, right? I mean, you can make this a good paragraph or two, really. There's no limit on the form, I think. So whatever you need to do there. Um, now a short description, and this short description is going to show up here. So this is kind of like a subtitle. So this should be a sentence. Right, so if this is a paragraph, this one's a sentence, and really a short sentence is probably better. Um, these are both technically optional, but we really do need those. Okay, so what kind of thing is this? I think I've got a lot of, I think looking at here, um, just and kind of going in my head through all your projects, I can't think of anyone's project that won't fit into one of these options. Um, 
but if it doesn't, if you're not sure what it does, you do have the other option. So you could click other and then fill in whatever you think is a better name for what you've created. Uh, and yeah, some of them I, I think are maybe multiple things, uh, but pick the best one uh, or the most fundamental one, right? So if you've got like a uh, story map and a timeline and a visualization and you're using a web page to put those all together, I would still call that a website, a website as the primary like artifact of the thing that you're, you've created. Um, but if you're, if you're not sure, just let me know. You can ask. Um, uh, finally, so well, not finally, we've got ways to go still. Uh, project URL. So if this is something that's published on a subdomain on your site, go ahead and submit it there. Um, you know, Instagram profile, anything like that that has a public URL, please include that this way, so that someone can, again, from the from the, uh, the gallery site, they can click on it and they can see it that way. Um, while you're doing that, by the way, don't forget, I mean, maybe you've already done this, but don't forget to submit your project to the Wayback Machine, uh, just in case. So uh, this is something that I will probably do for you, or I'll, I'll try to do for you, but I know a couple from fall 2019 that I missed and that are already gone. Um, but uh, it's really easy, just copy your URL, go to the Wayback Machine. Oh, they're doing a fundraiser, great. Uh, and then click down here to save page and that makes sure that at least the web archiver has a copy of it that they can start crawling. And sure, that looks fine. Cool, looks like it's working. Great, so please do that anyway, um, regardless. But that's something, you know, that's separate from my, my form here. Uh, so project upload, so this is just like, if it's a, like a Twine game that's less than 100 megabytes, that's what I was thinking of for this. Or I don't know if you have an audio file, maybe. Um, it, this will not actually make sense for most projects, but some of them it will. So if you have like an executable for your game uh, that you could upload it that way, I don't know, that's all I can think of really. So anything like that, uh, you can upload it. I guess you could archive a website and submit that as a file, but that's not that important to me. So um, uh, that's it, it, it's optional. If you have something you can upload, then great. If not, don't worry about it. But an HTML file would be great for a Twine game or a zip file, you might have to zip it. Uh, okay, so the thumbnail, this is very important and this is a required field, so please do this. So the um, idea is that this should be a square image. And you can see if you look through these, that these are all pretty much images that students created specifically to be the thumbnail for their project. Like this is something, a, a graphic that they created basically. Uh, in some cases, a logo. You may already have already have something like this. I think like the podcast, for example, the Instagram profiles, you probably already have like a profile picture um, that would be fine for your thumbnail. Uh, that would be great, actually. So um, that makes sense. Just, just please note it does need to be a square, right? So that means the width and the height equal each other. Um, I can scale it to whatever size I need to for my my uh, web page, but it's going to scale a lot better if it's already a square. So please make it a square. 200 by 200, 600 by 600 doesn't really matter, but please make that a square. And that's why I say right here, create a square image. I got a lot of rectangles last year, and I was like. I think that's pretty clear. I mean, I think square, I think that's, I think we know what squares are. So uh, please make that a square if you can. Um, you know, you can make uh, images in, in all kinds of ways, like, uh, you know, MS Paint or something. Um, Canva is a pretty good way to do stuff like this, right? So canva.com uh, has lots of like templates for making logos. You're welcome to use these. I mean, that would be fine. Um, I'm not gonna log in right now, but perhaps you may have seen Canva before and uh, or used something similar, totally fine, right? Um, think of something that's gonna be eye-catching, that's gonna maybe uh, attract some attention as someone scrolls through this list and like, oh, what's this? Someone check out Roommate Roulette, right? So think about being, um, you know, concise, but, uh, you know, something that cleverly conveys the idea and the tone of your project, um, and that'll, that'll do well for that submission. Okay, so, yeah, all right, uh, a few more of these, so bear with me. So a screenshot, this is where I want you to actually take a screenshot. So if you have an Instagram profile, actually view the profile and take a screenshot of it. You can try to, well, I mean, you could do that with your phone if you want, uh, but you can also get an Instagram profile off of, uh, you know, just a web browser. Um, computers do different things with screenshots. It's, uh, I wanna say it's Command Shift 3 for a Mac and, uh, control print screen on a Windows computer. Uh, I don't remember what it is on Linux. I just have a, an app that, that does it on my computer here. Um, let's see, there's a, I think there's actually a web screenshotter that might even work, work even better. 
me see. Maybe this is it. Oh, wow. Okay. So let's say we wanted to get Kindle's site. So notice like if I took a screenshot right now, I would just be getting this top part before I scroll down. But the idea of a web screenshot is that you can get the whole page as though you had scrolled down. So let's try this with Kindle's site. Let's see how this looks. Oh, I think there were settings down there, but I didn't actually look at them. So I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, that's not very impressive. It looks the same. It's the same. It's like, okay, that's, that didn't help at all. Maybe there was a setting that I didn't notice. Advanced? I don't know. I'll mess with this later. But um, if you find something like this, then share it in Discord so we can benefit. I saw a couple examples when I Googled just now, so perhaps, uh, perhaps you can find something that works well. Web capture? Let me just try this one real quick. Okay, URL to capture, JPEG, sure. Capture. Oh, my link is the next to be processed. Oh boy. I'm waiting. An error occurred. Eh, okay. I'll try later. Um, so if you find one that works that doesn't have errors like that, that would be great. Um, but in any case, it's okay just to take a screenshot. Now, if you do take a screenshot, um, put a little thought into uh, cropping it, I guess. Uh, so like if I took a screenshot, let me see what you're seeing. If I took a screenshot, yeah, so as Ginger Snap just said in, in Discord, if you want, you can also just sort of zoom out far enough that you can see the whole content. That would totally work too. That's a good idea, thanks. Yeah, um, but uh, the main thing, like if you take a screenshot of like, this is my Firefox window right now that goes all the way, you know, over here. Um, you can see I have a lot of tabs open right now and you might be distracted by those or I might be distracted by those if I see you have several tabs open. Um, in some cases, the name on a tab or the icon might reveal something embarrassing that you wished would remain private. So just make sure you crop out the browser basically whenever you take a screenshot and share it. Um, that's uh, just good advice for life. Make sure you, just you crop things out. Make sure you're aware of what's visible and put some thought into that before you share it. So, you know, and I, I will see these. So I will try to, if I see anything that might be embarrassing, I'll, I'll try to crop it out too. I mean, I have, I have to review all these. They're not automatically gonna, they're not gonna get posted automatically. Um, but, you know, just save me that time. Make sure that you've, you've cropped it accordingly. Um, I do have some things here I do want to show you in a minute, but um, this darn this image processor is taking forever. And I really wish I had written it in a way that would update, like show its status and give me a progress bar or something. But I didn't think it would take this long, so I didn't bother. Uh, all right, so back to the form. I know this seems like a lot, but this is important. So especially here, maybe I should have started with the bottom because this part is more important. Um, keywords are not super important, actually. Just comma separated, whatever you think for like roommate roulette, right? So this is, these are gonna show up here as things that you can click on. And then the idea is that you'll get, I mean, this is part of the slide I haven't actually built yet, but the idea is that you'll be able to see other uh, works that deal with the same theme, which is in this case, college life. Um, so, you know, this would be a way that like several of you are doing topics related to nutrition, for example, like uh, a twine game versus a uh, internet community and those are both projects that have different formats, but they have the same theme. So it might be interesting to look at them together. So that way, if a future student is like, well, I want to do something with nutrition, but I'm not sure what I can do. I could share them, share with them that link to all of the nutrition related projects. And they could see several different uh, ways people have addressed topics around nutrition with different formats. So that's the idea. Um, cool. So keywords. Yeah, fine. Okay. Now we get into some interesting stuff and imp very important stuff. So uh, this is the this is the part I hope you've you've been. Well, this is the part I hope you're hope you're watching. So um, I would like for you to indicate a uh, Creative Commons license for this work. Um, now there are several options here, and these options have subtle differences. You can read about their differences in CreativeCommons.org. The main two. Uh, that you should know about already are all rights reserved and public domain. Um, and I would say that most of the time, 
I personally use either all rights reserved, public domain, or CC BY. Uh, there are def definitely differences and different um, philosophies behind these, but this is your project is your creative work, and so you are entitled to licensing it in the way that makes sense to you. Um, if you don't specify otherwise, your work is assumed to be all rights reserved, and that's fine, that's a valid choice, but I think that Creative Commons is nice because it gives you more options and it gives other people that might want to build on your work later more options as well. And that's what Creative Commons is. It takes copyright, it doesn't undermine copyright, it just creates more options than currently exist in copyright law. Uh, copy, Creative Commons is not law, technically. Um, it's a kind of licensing structure that you can add on top of the legal context of copyright. And many people do, and in many cases, your products have benefited from other people making their work available this way. Like if you use any work from Unsplash, for example, Unsplash is a site where photographers up upload their uh, photography and they say, anyone can use this, it's free. And that's great, right? I mean, you can use it and then your project looks better because you've got some nice professional quality photography built into your project and that's great. Um, you might have produced something really nice for your project and other people might want to use it later. If that's okay with you, you should go ahead and tell them now so that they don't have to get in touch with you later if they want to use it. So uh, that's what the Creative, Li Co Creative Commons license is doing. And these all have differences, like I can explain them briefly. Uh, all rights reserved means no one is allowed to do anything with your work, including make a copy of it or host it or distribute it or um, make a derivative work from it. And that's a very restrictive license, but that's the, la that's the nature of copyright, right? That's, that's what it's for. Uh, public domain means anybody can do anything they want at all with this forever, right? You can't take it back. With public domain, you can't take it back. Um, CC BY means anybody can do things with my work as long as they give me credit. As long as they say somewhere in their project, like this image was by Zach Whalen. That's okay with me. Or I got this assignment description from Zach Whalen. That's why my still by, they're all uh, CC BY. Because I kind of want to know, I kind of want people to know that I made up some things sometimes and you know, uh, others share alike means that if you make something based on my work, you also have to share it with the CC BY license. Uh, no derivatives means you're welcome to use my work, but don't make anything based on it. Non-commercial means you can do anything with my work as long as you give me credit and you don't make any money from it. Um, and then you can see the different combinations. I don't need to belabor this, but um, you know, the, check out creativecommons.org. Um, even if you're not sure what you want to do with this. Um, or what, you know, maybe if you already know what you want to do with the different licenses, I think it's pretty interesting on here because you can, uh, I mean, you can find other people's work, right? They, they've set it up so you can learn about the Creative Commons concept, but you can also search for content that you're free to use. And I think that could be really useful for many of your projects um, now or in the future. Okay, so this is going to show up on the gallery page so that if someone comes to this, you can see that, um, Kindle chose to license, no, this is uh, Cameron, chose to license her work um, by NC no, no Derivatives. So you're welcome to um, use host her game on your website, for example. You may not make a game based on it, right? You can't uh, make a, a mod of it or a hack of it. So that's, that's fine, that was her choice. Okay, so that's uh, something you should definitely specify that is required. Um, this one, do you consent to me hosting it on the website? Now, you don't have to, like you could share it and put it in here and then at the last minute be like, you know what, I, no, <laughs> I don't want to. Um, I somehow, for some reason, these are both options. That really should not be the case because these are mutually exclusive. So choose one or the other, please. Um, do you consent to me hosting it on the big project gallery on dtst101.net? Um, yes or no, pretty straightforward. Copyright affirmation. This one's a bit a bit more complicated um, and a bit more at stake here. So uh, do you affirm that all of the media, all of the images, all the video, all the sounds, everything in your projects, uh, you are using, that you're allowed to use those things, right? So um, that's yes, that's no, or I'm not sure. And if it's I'm not sure, I'm probably not gonna use your project just because the work to, that I would need to do to be sure is might be significant. So um, you should do that work or you can do that work or you hopefully already have done that work. And if so, you should say yes. But if you definitely know you haven't done that work or you're not sure what I'm talking about, then go with I'm not sure and I probably can't use your project. Um, copyright is important. So copyright means that if, if you find, 
if you want to use an image in your blog as like the header or as like a featured image on a post, that's great. That's a good way to do things and make your work visually interesting. But if you just go to Google Images and grab the first image that you see there, you probably didn't have permission to use that image and using it on your site is actually a copyright violation. Therefore, it would similarly be a copyright violation if I used it on my site to link to your project, right? So that's something that I need you to test, tell me that you've checked and made sure that you have permission to use these things. Um, if you're not sure, it's okay to ask. Like I can, I can try to give you a feedback on that. Like I can help you determine if your work is copyright free or not. Um, but there's a couple ways to be sure, right? If you've made it, like if you took the photo yourself, then you have copyright over that. Um, if you found it on a site that explicitly says anyone's free to use this, then great, right? Uh, I mentioned unsplash.com, great place to find images. Freesounds.org is a great place to find sounds. Um, so those are places where the license will be indicated when you download it. It'll say you're allowed to use this or you're, are you, you're allowed to use it for certain conditions, right? So if you've always done that for each step, then you're fine. Uh, but if you're not sure or if you didn't do that, then you might, you might just have to say no here. All right, so again, if you have questions, just uh, feel free to ask. All right, finally, uh, streaming consent. What I would like to do is, um, I assume many of you will submit this today or maybe you already have while I've been talking. Um, I would like to take a look at some of those on the stream on Wednesday. So if you don't mind, tell me, tell me if you mind that or not. <laughs> Basically, uh, is it okay for me to share it on the stream? And if I do share it on the stream, I might uh, show all of it or part of it. Uh, I might, I, I will probably need to refer to you by name. So if that's something you're okay with, then tell me. If that's something you're not okay with, then just say no. Um, and I guess the other option is if you have some combination or some stipulation on how you want your work to be discussed, you can express it there. But mainly I'm hoping that several of you will uh, allow me to share your work so that I can um, show it off, maybe even critique it a little bit to give you some ideas and pointers to help you tweak it uh, as you finalize things. Um, but, you know, that's your choice. You don't have to do that. Okay, any questions? So I've been talking for a bit. Let's see, I've got some people typing, but no, maybe just people still saying hi. All right, um, hello, everyone. So do you have any questions about the project gallery submission form? Uh, now would be a good time to ask them, ask those questions. If not, um, I don't know, just give me a thumbs up, I guess, if you're good. Uh, and I'm gonna take the last few minutes and show you the project I've been working on unless there's a lot of questions. Okay, thanks, Samantha. Cool, thanks. I uh, will do that on Wednesday, not today, because we're almost out of time for today. So um, here's, cool, thanks, Alex. Um, all right, let, let's take a look at this project. So let me explain a little bit, and uh, I'm pretty excited about this, so I'm probably gonna get carried away, <laughs> but I'll try to keep this organized. All right, so I talked about this a little bit this morning in my graphic novel class because what I did, this, what I've been doing is a, a graphic, a visual work. So um, this is GitHub. GitHub is a website that lets people share computer code and then helps you find computer code whenever you need a, a program to do something or you need a bit of code uh, to do something. Often you can find it on GitHub. Uh, it's a very useful site. It's a place where people share open source software. Um, so a few years ago, 2013, uh, a, an event got started and to, that uh, Darius Kazimi started an event called NanoGenmo and it is hosted on GitHub. And this is this year's, what I'm looking at here is the this year's um, issue of it. Uh, so this is using GitHub in an unusual way. Usually people in GitHub will post what's called a, a project, a, a repository, and then people that use that repository or have problems with it will post what are called issues and then discuss or you know file bug reports or propose improvements. Um, for NanoGemma, what people do instead is there's a central repository that is really just an explanation of the idea, right? So this is it. And then people post in the issues thread what uh, they, they post their project in the issues thread. So I'm kind of, I have not actually looked at this year's uh, submissions very much yet. Oh man. All right, so this is good. Uh, I can't wait to dig into this. Lots of really interesting works. Uh, looking, it looks like anyway from the titles. So, um, is that Sandra from, is this the same Sandra? 
that that just graduated this might be i don't that looks like oh it is oh cool that's great i'm so glad she's still contributing so sandra uh she just graduated in the spring and so she's a umw student or a recent graduate alumni um so uh that's awesome i'm so glad she's still uh, contributing um, she did an excellent nano project last year i didn't even explain the idea yet the idea for nano is it's a parody of nano rimo uh, which you may have heard of nano rimo is a i guess contest or just challenge where people challenge themselves to, to try to write a novel in the month of November, uh, it has to be 50,000 words and people like they challenge each other, they keep track of their progress, they share their updates on Twitter and whatever. Like it's a whole thing and people get really into it. It's, it's, it's a great thing. Uh, my daughter's doing it. She's trying to get to 5,000 words on a short story she's writing. So um, uh, NanoGenmo is a parody of that. And the parody is that you're, you're supposed to write computer code that will generate a 50,000 word book uh, in the month of November. And the joke of it is that uh, and then what I, what I find fascinating about NanoGenmo is it is, a, on the one hand, extremely easy to do that, right? Like to write some computer code that will generate 50,000 words can take you a couple seconds and you can be done in a couple seconds. And that's completely valid as far as NanoGenmo is concerned. As far as the community of NanoGenmo is concerned, you can submit that and you'll get a big thumbs up and that, you know, you're done, right? Um, but the great thing about that is that because there's such a low bar for entry, people challenge themselves to do really interesting and complex and intricate things um, just to see if they can and to see what's possible. So um, I'm really curious to see what Sandra's done this year. Last year, she um, generated ASCII art of a video and then <laughs> took the text from that and then printed that as a book. It was, it was amazing. Um, this year, let's see. Um, mine, I've, I've done it most of the, I've, I missed a couple, one or two years, but I've done it, I do the, I do contribute to this most, most years. Um, and I've had some success with them. This year, what I'm trying to do is, let's see, maybe I can show you if I switch, let me switch on my, current, I've, I've got a bunch of tabs pulled up in my other browser that might be more illustrative. Um, but what I did is, do you remember, hopefully you remember um, this person does not exist.com and back way back when we were talking about artificial creativity or computational creativity. Uh, let me see, make this bigger. So yeah, so uh, that's the, this person does not exist.com, right? So this is a person that doesn't exist. This is a face, an image of a face generated by a neural network called StyleGAN2. And so StyleGAN2 is the, the software that runs this. So what I did is I started with StyleGAN. Well, no, I didn't start with StyleGAN. Um, I started with uh, comic books from the 1950s. Uh, this is an archive of comics published by ec comics yes this is a dumb page um, like a really lurid kind of page um this is uh these are comics that were known for being kind of, kind of shocking and disturbing and weird um you can see in the art there's a lot of really intense facial expressions and line you know lots of text really um this is uh these were the comics that led to the comics code authority and you know essentially censorship of comics so these are famous stories uh tales from this these are horror comics so it's tales from the crypt um, Vault of Fear, Squatrons, like these are all these silly kind of ridiculous um, Twilight Zone kind of comics. Sometimes a little gory, but usually not. Usually just kind of spooky and kind of like an ironic twist at the end or something. Um, honestly, the stories are really cheesy and entertaining to read. Um, so I like them, just reading them. But one thing you'll notice as you look at, at these is a lot of these have a very, uh, very predictable panel format. Um, they're almost always rectangles. And that's convenient for me because I happen to have a little bit of code that I've used in the past where I can extract rectangular regions from images. And that's that works well for panels in comics when they are rectangular like this. So I did that. I extracted about 5,000 panels from these comics, EC comics. And then I fed those into StyleGAN2. So StyleGAN2, which already knows how to draw faces, I gave it these and said, hey, try to draw these instead. And it took it several... Um, probably about 10 hours before it started to get something that looked kind of reasonable, uh, 10 hours of computational time of training, training, training for 10 hours. Um, it's up to about 100 something hours right now, and it's gotten pretty good. So let's see, this is actually what is being processed right now. Uh, let's see, this is, 
it, this is running through about 8,000 panels that I'm, I've generated and then I'm running some more code to crop these to make them things that I can use and lay out into pages. But yeah, so this is an example of, of a page generated by the AI. Um, I mean, a panel, not a page, but yeah, kind of see some things. But basically the, the structure of the panel is pretty intact in the sense that there's a speech bubble, there's a person in it that seems to be experiencing some kind of distress, right? I, I think overall, these are pretty creepy looking comic panels, but I think they're very recognizable as comic panels. So the code I'm working on now is going to take these and rearrange them into new comic pages. Um, but they're starting with the unit of the panel. And I was hoping to have the, the page generator finished, but I need to get the panels fully cropped. And so far they've been cropping for two and a half hours. So uh, I don't know how far along this is, but it's uh, when this cell completes, then I will have 8,000 panels I can work with. Um, I got it kind of working last night with, with 2,000 panels, but 8,000 I think will give me more variety. So um, yeah, so it's generating these things and basically the AI is going through and generating things that it thinks are uh, coherent panels based on what it thinks a panel is supposed to look like, which it knows because I fed it those 5,000 panels to begin with. So this is how it's going. Now, um, one of the things you can do with this sort of network is you can construct what's called a latent space walk. And so it's a little hard to explain. I'm gonna wave my hands around a bit to explain it. But the, the idea is that uh, we think of space in three dimensions, right? So like uh, extension in three directions, right? Uh, a, if you can think of that as an analogy, a neural network like the one I'm using has an idea of space that has 512 dimensions and every panel that it shows me represents a point within that 512 dimensional space. So a latent walk is whenever you give it one point and you give it another point and you say, I want you to figure out all of the points between this point and that point. And then it draws that line. But instead of showing you the line, it shows you the image that corresponds to each of those positions along that line. And so then it gives you what looks like a kind of relatively smooth transition from this image to this image, but each point in that transition is also a valid image. And so the result looks pretty interesting and um, you can make it into a short video, which is what I did and what I shared on Twitter. And this is, um, you're gonna have to permit me, this is a little braggadocious of me. Is that a word? Braggadocious, it's not a word. Uh, but this is, I was very pleased, uh, I guess, with the uh, attention that this received when I posted it on Twitter. Um, I don't know if you would call this going viral, but um, it's got, you know, 456 retweets and 2,000, over 2,000 likes. And so this is a latent walk of the, of the neural net's uh, idea of a comic panel. And this was from a few days ago, so it's much smarter by now. But um, even at this point, you can see it was pretty close. And just the way that it kind of flows through this space, it's actually a loop, so it'll it'll continue like this forever, I think is really pretty compelling and interesting to look at. Uh, this is a essentially a byproduct of my the work that I'm doing for the graph for the um, novel that I hope to generate, but uh, it's pretty fascinating to look at as a as a byproduct of that. It's also a little nauseating, I think, just like you get a little seasick watching it. Um, it got a lot of attention because it got retweeted by a couple people, and then. Uh, eventually retweeted by uh, William Gibson and Neil Gaiman and Bruce Sterling and uh, a couple other pretty big deal science fiction people. So I was pleased with that and uh, that's what led to it getting that much um, uh, interaction. So pretty cool, but also pretty disturbing and weird. So not for everybody, but that's it's the kind of thing I really enjoy as a as a byproduct of uh, as a byproduct of this project. So I don't know. I hope you enjoyed that brief explanation of it. Um, once I share the the once I complete the final the graphic novel I, I the comic I, I will share it. The issue one of the issues I've had with the comic by the way is it's um, you know comics comic books have like a cover they have like an inside uh, for these EC comics there's usually like the crypt keeper or the old witch or somebody will be like introducing the story so there's like a page where you have like the title and then you have them like like leaning in from the side and like saying like you know, this long like exposition basically to set up the story. And I couldn't really, there's no real way to do that in this generator that I'm using. So um, I, I don't have that going, but I, I do have, I have tried a few things with covers. 
Um, but what's interesting is that there's so few, relatively speaking, that the AI just didn't have enough work, didn't have enough to train on. And so um, the results are not very interesting. Um, they basically look like, well, I'll show you. So um, after running for a long time, it, they just sort of got worse after a while. So this is the, the best it can do after maybe 20, 25 hours of training. You can see that sometimes it looks pretty okay, um, but that's really, it's like less than half of the time. The rest of the time it gets these blobby things. It's just because there's not enough uh, information. So the AI is just filling in gaps and then guessing and then sort of building off of that guess and then building off of that guess and then building off of that guess. And then it kind of follows these kind of wrong paths down these here. Um, it actually got, it was actually better before. So it was better after about 10 hours and that, let me see, I think I have the results here. So I think I might just generate some covers from this earlier idea of the uh, the brain. And you can see like, again, it's just Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, Haunt of Fear. Like those are the only three titles that I used for these. So other than like the weird stuff on the side, some of these are pretty coherent. Like if you look at like this one, it's pretty much, you know, it's a little gooey looking, but it's, you can read it like that's something that's pretty impressive so i'll probably use this or something similar as the covers um although you know there's still a chance even if i use this particular uh, brain copy of this particular network it could also produce one of these which are you know interesting but in a different way so i don't know i'd rather i would prefer this kind of the, this issue down here in the bottom right but the way the generator works like you can't you just ask for a random seed value and there's no way to predict where within this space that's going to be because you know there's no there's no way to map between like a, a decimal value and a 500 a point in 512 dimensional space um, partly because the ai has intuited most of those dimensions like it has decided what those 512 dimensions should represent as features of images that it's trying to replicate and so it's it's decided those and so i don't know what they are anyway um but pretty cool that was my project that's my big project uh, this is a, a progress report i guess because i'm not done because this this has been going for a while let's see yeah it's been going for yeah two hours it's been going so i could kill this and just see how many i have and then work with that but i just i feel like once this is done it'll be a good set of panels to to play with as far as generating page layouts so i don't know i did figure out the, the row 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 layout which seems like would be which was harder than i thought because i originally thought i'll just stick one two three or one two but the problem is the panels are irregularly proportioned so i have to make sure that when i go one two three it adds up to 2100 or if i go one two it adds up to 2100 and that's, that's hard to check for ahead of time so basically i had it first time i had it just sort of guessing and then if it got a close enough match it, it would keep that and then later i had it like um I had something else and then but now what works is to basically just fill in buckets until i get enough that are i'm happy with um, and it's hard to explain, but that's, this is the code that's doing that. And this runs in a few seconds. Whereas the one that I was doing originally, this one down here was not done after like an hour. Um, so this is the way to do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was my project. Thanks for letting me talk about that for a minute. Thanks for watching. If you still are, it looks like my view count went down a little bit. Uh, you probably don't care, but I, I enjoyed working on this project. This is the kind of thing I, I like to do in my spare time. So. It's fun to indulge in that a little bit over break uh, because it's November. Um, I have two more NanoGemmo projects I'm going to try to finish by midnight tonight, but uh, I don't know if I'll have time. They're very, they should be short, um, but you know, things that I think will go quickly sometimes don't. So <laughs> we'll see. But this one, I'm pretty sure I can finish by midnight. I just need to get this thing to finish cropping the panels so I can work with them. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for um, watching the stream today. I'll be streaming again on Wednesday and then my project, my, my idea, idea for Friday is to do something different. Um, perhaps a Zoom or some kind of um, conference call where we can all talk to each other. But Wednesday it will be another stream so I can, cause I want a chance to talk about some of your projects um, and critique them maybe, or give you feedback, uh, you know, give you know, public feedback basically. So uh, let me know if you, if that's okay with you. Uh, indicate that in the form when you submit it and um, 
yeah, just plan on tuning in on Wednesday and then Friday. Whatever we do Friday, I'll send you a link or figure it out. Um, if you have any thoughts about that, if you have any strong feelings about Zoom or something else, pro or con, let me know and I will uh, factor that in as I think about what to do for Friday. But yeah, and I guess Wednesday I'll also talk about your final, like the final final thing to turn in. Um, that is not due till next week, and it's not a, it's not a big deal, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, so hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.